So before we get started, um, if you want to follow along, you can grab all of your supplies. I've got watercolors, I've got a cup of water, um, a couple of waterproof pens, some watercolor paper, and then my watercolor brush. Hey, Mai. Yeah, this is a little new, um, talking to a screen and not hearing anyone, so I feel a little bit like I'm talking to myself. But we're going to go through some of my tips for watercolors. So first, I'm just going to talk about um, the materials that I like to use and which ones I would recommend for you to buy. I don't think you need to buy a ton to get started. So what I would recommend is just some scratch watercolor paper. You don't need to go buy the expensive stuff. Um, I actually use this Canson brand. Um, super affordable. You can get it at Michael's or Hobby Lobby for half off all the time. Um, the second brand I like to use is the Strathmore 300 series. Um, again, pretty easy to use. Um, it's kind of that middle ground and honestly if you're just starting out I would recommend the Canson brand. It's affordable and easy to use. Um, in terms of brushes, this is where I would spend a little more money. When I say a little more, I mean like one or two dollars more to get a little bit better brush. I use a Da Vinci Nova brush. Um, for sizes, a lot of these, I don't know if you can kind of see, but this one has a five on it. Generally, I would go between a four and a six, and this is the shape that I use. Look, there we go. It's a round shape. This is the most versatile. Honestly, I have a couple other different brushes, but this is the one I go to all the time. So I think this one might be four, six dollars at Jerry's, depending on sales. Um, and then for watercolors, this is kind of funny. Here is the palette that I've used for like 15 plus years. It was a super cheap, um, basic palette. You don't really need really expensive watercolors to get started. Um, what I'd recommend is look for some that look maybe a little bit shiny. So I know a lot of people get watercolors that kind of look like this. They're a little more chalky. Um, these are good. I don't personally like these as much. I like the ones that have a little bit more shine to it. They're a little easier to mix. I think these tend to look a little more opaque, which is good, but it's just a personal preference. So I recently um, upgraded to a Winsor & Newton set. And this one actually comes in a starter set, which has 12 of these colors. Um, exact same watercolors, just a little smaller. So that one I think might be $15 or so. So I would recommend going with the Windsor & Newton if you can spend about 15 bucks and you can get the small set. So I have a link to this on my website. It should be under um, my blog post and I talk about different materials that I use and I recommend the Windsor um, watercolors in that set. So Let's get started. Um, I'm gonna put it on the full video. Okay, so what I've got are my watercolors, um, a cup of water, and then your paper, and obviously a watercolor brush. So this tutorial is really aimed to get you started. You don't have to have any sort of experience. Um, definitely recommend trying different things out. Don't be afraid. So to get started, I'm going to talk about how you wet your brush because this, I think, is the problem that a lot of people run into when they're first getting started is how much water should I put on my brush? So what I do if I have a dry brush to get started, just really, um, you can, you don't have to baby the brush, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So get it wet and then if you want to squeeze out some water because if it's dripping, I don't know if you can kind of see that. There's a little bit of drip on the bottom, so I just kind of tap it on the side of my cup. And then now that your brush is super wet, you can go into your watercolors. So I'm going to start with this tan color. So you can just get a little bit of water on the surface. So it'll start to make a little bit of a puddle. 
And now this color is super, super concentrated on my brush. So the less water and more pigment you have, the darker the color is going to be on the paper. So for example, if you start, it's super thick. Um, so if you want to make it not quite as thick or dark, you can add a little bit more water. So I still have paint on my brush. I'm just going to dip it back in. So now that your color is already wet, you can pick some up. And what I do is either you can use a plate or the top of your palette, and you can just drop some color in there. And then you can go back and grab more water. So now my brush is really wet, and just mix some of that water in. So now you'll get a slightly lighter color. So you can keep kind of repeating this process. Add more water. And then now it's super light. So I haven't necessarily gone back and gotten more pigment. If you want to darken this little puddle up, you can grab more, mix it in, and now you're going back to a bit darker. So I definitely encourage you to just play around with adding different levels of water to your colors. Use the top of your palette um, for one like this. I think I had it somewhere. Yeah, it comes with a top. So I would actually mix it directly in the top. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, the good part about watercolors is you just need water to clean it. So you can dunk it under the sink when you're done. So what I would recommend if you just got some new watercolors um, is to make a watercolor cheat sheet. So I actually have this stored in the lid of my compartment. So all that you have to do is get a scrap piece of paper and then just go to each watercolor and make a little square for each color. And just make sure to clean your brush super thoroughly in between this. Um, if you want to be really accurate, you can get a new cup of water about halfway through, just so your water doesn't get super murky. And then you can just grab more color until you make a chart similar to this. And I like to keep it in the same order as my watercolors so I can easily see like, oh, this yellow is the third yellow, which you can kind of see that um, I use it a lot. <laughs> There's other color on it. So that would be my recommendation to you is to create kind of a cheat sheet for your watercolors. Okay, so the next thing is tone with watercolor. So once you start making these watercolor cheat sheets, maybe you start playing with water, um, adding more pigment to the color, making it darker or lighter. Once you get that, you're gonna get a feel for how much paint you need on your brush to keep going. Um, one mistake that I see people making is they will get the brush wet, which is good. They'll go and get paint which is good. And what they might do is think, oh no, I have too much paint, and they'll come and wipe it on the side of their cup. And then they'll try to paint with it, and it becomes kind of this like dry mess. Um, not necessarily a mess if this is what you're going for, but if you want a smooth watercolor, then grab some paint. And then you're not getting, you're not scraping water off of it. You're just going directly to the paper. Then you can get a more smooth line. And then while this is still wet, if you want to start to blend, you can get more water and then kind of start on the edge of the color. And you can blend it. And this only works when the color is still wet. So again, more water versus less water. So if you don't have enough water, you'll start to see the texture of the paper. If you have a lot of water, then it becomes a more smooth application. So this is called a wet on dry technique. So essentially you're taking a wet brush and putting it on dry paper. 
and then you can get a couple different effects with it. A wet on wet technique is taking a wet brush to already wet paper and this creates a more smooth finish. Um, you can also get some splotches on the paper which can look nice. So let's try that. So clean your brush off and get it the term is loaded or charged with your brush when you have a bunch of paint or water on it. So just put some water on the paper. Okay. So now if I go back and grab some of that purple pigment and drop it in. You can kind of add some water droplets to it and it'll start to spread. So that's the wet on wet technique. Another way to do this is if you get your paper wet again, And I'm gonna go back with this purple paint, but let's say I don't want maybe as much, so I'll create a little spot on my palette, add a little bit of water to it, maybe a little more. Now if I apply it, you can get a really smooth texture with just water. So all three of these are the exact same color, it's just different techniques. With wet on dry, you get a more um, clean line. With wet on wet, you get kind of this faded, either solid wash or a splotchy effect, depending on how you put your brush down on the paper. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is mix a couple different colors. So this works best when you have enough color on the paper to pull it and mix it. So what I mean by that is when I did this wet on dry, I had quite a bit of color already on it. I'm gonna take my purple again, so I have a lot of pigment on the brush. So, and it's pretty wet, so there's kind of a puddle of color on the paper. I'm gonna clean my brush. Now I'm gonna go and pick a different color. Let's do a Maybe this light blue. So a lot of pigment. Put it down on the paper. And now I'm going to clean my brush. And I have quite a bit of water on it. It's not dripping, but it's full of water. So I'm going to go to the edge of this purple and pull it towards the blue. And you can clean your brush again. Again, get enough water to where it's not dripping, but also not dry. So if you see a little drop, you can kind of tap it on the side of your cup and then pull blue. Then you can start to kind of push the colors together and blend them. So I definitely encourage you to try blending different colors. Um, you'll notice this is also helpful with the cheat sheet. You can see which colors are super dark and which are really light. Like the yellows tend to be really transparent, so you can only add a little bit of, say, the darker color to it or else it will overpower. So if I was trying to mix green, I would need a lot of yellow because it's very light and maybe like the tiniest drop of blue. So this kind of helps you see like this blue is really concentrated whereas this blue isn't. Um, this blue, this it's called cerulean blue, it is very potent. So that one I mix very little amounts with. Okay, um, another quick tip is I actually don't use the white watercolor and I very rarely use the black watercolor. Um, the white one is really to make any color opaque 
which to me the point of watercolor is to have this nice transparent background. Um, people use it, I don't. Um, the black, this is kind of a rule of thumb with most art pieces is we don't really use black because it tends to suck all the color away. If you want to make black you tend to mix multiple colors together and then you create this darker shade which your eye interprets as black. So if you can, try to stay away from the black and experiment with other different colors. So the way that I mix shadow is usually you would think, you know, let's put some black on the paper and call it shadow. So my hack which I actually learned from a watercolor teacher in Italy. Um, he mixed blue and red together to create this kind of deep purple, and that your eye reads it as shadow. So I tend to keep one of my um, compartments dedicated to this shadow color. So I'll mix a little right now. I get my brush wet again. Not dripping, have a little bit of a drop hanging off, so I'll tap it. I'm going to grab I have this really dark blue that I use. I'm going to grab this guy. He's super strong, so I tend to put him off to the side. Clean my brush again. I'm going to go back for my true red. So some reds in your palette might be a little purple red or kind of orangey red. I try to pick like the most primary red I can find. And I'll grab just a tiny bit. So I didn't even use all of that blue. I just used a tiny piece of it. And so now it creates this really dark purple. Um, and this color reads as shadow in a lot of applications. So try using this if you're doing shadows in your drawings. And if you really, really, really have to use black, you can always take just a tiny bit and mix it in. Okay. Does anyone have any questions that they want to learn or things that maybe aren't making sense? Just feel free to drop it in the chat and I'll try to answer it as we go along. Um, okay. Now I want to talk about mixing greens. So now we've gone through these different techniques and the best way to learn is just get some scrap pieces of paper and go to town. Mess them up, don't worry about it. And then if you want to go to paint something, you might run into, oh, I want to paint this green. Well, a lot of palettes either have a green that's really um, kind of poke your eye out green it doesn't look super natural. So if you want to make like a more leafy green or like a basil green, then you're going to have to mix it. So I have this green in my palette that I use a lot. It's kind of a yellow based green. This one here is a blue based green. So I tend to go with the yellow based, but up to you. I'm going to start with this yellow based green just to make a forest green. So I'm going to get my brush wet and then kind of coat the green paint to create a little puddle. Now I'm going to pull it into my palette and grab a little more green. Okay. I'm going to clean my brush. Now I'm going to go into that red, but only grab a little. I'm not going to create a giant puddle. So now if I mix I'm just taking like a little dollop of this red and adding it to the green. And sometimes you might find that this has become too dark, so you can always add more green to it. So now this is a pretty pigmented green, so if I put it directly on the paper, it's pretty dark. So if I want to lighten it up, I can just add more water directly to this color. Sometimes if you find that you've added too much water to your color and it's starting to pool on your paper, let me see if I can get a really clear example here. So, here we go. 
You can kind of see the water is collecting and creating this darker piece here. And maybe I didn't want that. Maybe I want it to be more solid. So a way to lift color or water off of the paper is to clean your brush and then really kind of squeeze it out. If you have a paper towel, what you can do is just dab it to get your brush pretty dry. So a dry brush is a thirsty brush. So if you touch your dry brush to this color, it almost like sucks it right back up into the brush. So now you don't have that blob of color. And you can even put it somewhere else. Or if you're feeling like, oh no, that was too much, you can even take your paper towel and just directly lift it off. There's really no right or wrong way to do it. Um, I tend to use either my brush if it's a smaller detail, but if it's a lot of water and I made a complete oopsie, I'll take a paper towel. So we'll riff on that. Let's say also you watercolored a piece and you hate it and you want to kind of erase it. Um, the way to do that is to add water and you kind of, you don't want to scrub the paper too much because that can lift the paper. Um, the paper is made up of all these different fibers, so the more you scrub it, you might damage the paper. And this is especially true with cheaper papers. The cheaper the paper is, probably the easier it is to damage it. You can't erase a lot on it, but the more expensive the paper is, usually it's a lot more durable, a lot thicker, a lot more fibers. Um, so it just is a little more forgiving, but I still stand by, go with the cheaper paper to get started. So let's try to maybe erase some of the screen. So we're gonna get our brush really wet again. And this time you can even leave it kind of dribbling. Maybe there's a lot of water on the brush. So I'm just gonna almost scrub it. And then you can take your paper towel because now there's a lot of water pulled on here. And you can use your paper towel to quickly lift off that color. So it's almost like erasing it. Um, You'll probably still get a little bit of a faint line if it was a really dark color. And you don't want to scrub this paper for days and days trying to get it up. This one actually came up pretty well. So now it's practically gone. Okay. And let's chat about um, another value trick. So value means that you're going from a darker to a lighter or vice versa. It's just the different um, intensities of that color. So the one way that we talked about was you have a lot of paint and then you start to add more water and then more water. But another way to do it is to add layers. And this is why I don't use the white because when you add layers, you can add, they're transparent, so they build on top of each other. The second you add that white color, they tend to not build as well. So let's try to build on these two colors to maybe make them the same shade as this guy. So this was my tan color. So there's a lot of paint on this right now. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. I'm just dipping my brush in to get a little bit of a drop of water, adding it. So now my brush is loaded with this kind of watery tan. And now I can go back over this guy. So you can start to build up the color um, with layers. And you have to make sure that the color is dry before you add layers. If you add a wet color on top of a wet color, it's just going to stay the same. Um, if you're impatient like me, I tend to hop around the page and kind of let pieces dry as I'm working on something else. And by the time I get back around to it, it's dry enough for me to work. So maybe let's do a little bit of layer building on top of this purple with a different color so you can see the effect. So what would be a good color with purple? Let's do a blue. So instead of this um, really intense blue, this might, because it's not as transparent, you're not going to get as good of a layering effect. I'm going to try using like this lighter blue so we can see through it a little bit better. 
I'll grab some water, make a pool on this light blue. And I don't quite want this much pigment right off the bat. I'm going to add a bit of water to it. So you can kind of see that you can see the purple through this blue. Um, this is a cool way to get different colors without actually mixing it directly in your paint pan. You can start layering these different colors together to create something completely different. Um, I use this a lot in my doodles where, say if we're drawing a tomato, and the tomato starts out super red. Let's actually do that together. Need more space. So if I was going to paint a tomato, I'm going to get some red, I'm going to draw a circle. This is that really dark part. I'm going to get some more water. And this is just water on my brush, so what I'm going to do is pull the red towards the center to create a gradient. So I'm just kind of touching that edge of that red line. And then with watercolor, you don't add white, you leave the white of the paper to show um, little white highlights on your objects. So I'm going to leave this little center white. Okay. So we're going to let this dry for a couple minutes because remember, if this is wet and you try to layer color, it's just going to bleed all over and it's not going to be like a a cool layered effect. It's just going to be a color mixed. So let's experiment with maybe a different color somewhere else. So I'm going to take this shadow color. Um, and this is also another tip too. If you use your palette for these different colors and they dry up, all you have to do is add a little bit of water and your colors go right back to being used. So I tend to use um, like one section for shadow colors, a couple different sections for green because I mix those a lot, and then the others I just kind of use for browns and reds. And then similar to wet on wet, if you have two colors that are next to each other, and they're both wet, as in one hasn't dried yet, then they could bleed into each other. So I left a little bit of a white line between the two, so that way they don't touch and start to bleed. So if I had done this, and then I took my shadow color, and I got maybe too close to it, these colors will start to bleed a little bit and you'll lose that crisp line between the two. So you either wait until they're totally dry before you add a color right next to it, or you leave a little space like I did here, and then they're not going to run into each other. Okay. And if you're super impatient, <laughs> you can take even a hair dryer. I've done this before. Um, and you can just kind of wave it over your paper and that'll dry it quickly. Let's see, that's still kind of damp. So what I'm going to do next while waiting for this to dry is I'm going to show you guys some yellow and show you how transparent it is. So one of these yellows is super transparent. you can see the purple straight through it. But if I pick that really dark blue that we've been talking about, it's not as transparent. So to avoid that happening, um, the way I tend to work is light to dark. So if I want to build up some color, I'll start with a um, 
kind of a base layer and you can always add to it. That's the nice part with watercolors. You can keep building different colors, different layers um, until you get it to where you want it to be. Okay. I think this tomato is dry enough. So what I'm going to do is add a layer of color that maybe has a little bit more orange to it. So what I can do is take that same red that we used to make the tomato, put it in my palette, I'm going to clean my brush again so I can go to a different color, and I'm going to grab kind of a true orange, and then mix it directly into that red. Okay, that seems about the right color. I've got enough on my brush, so now I can go in and add it right on top of that color that we already put down. Then on the opposite side, if we want this side of the tomato to have a little bit more shadow, we can add some of that um, kind of a blue color, which again, going back to this red-blue, a lot of the time there's blue and shadow, so if you want a color to appear a bit darker, sometimes the key is adding a touch more blue. So now that I've got this red-orange already mixed, I'm just going to take just a tiny dab of this blue here. And it doesn't need much. I think it actually needs more red. I'm going to grab more red. That's better. Okay, so now I have like a purpley red color and it's pretty dark. So I don't know if I want quite this amount of dark on my tomatoes. I'm going to just add more water to this color. Okay. And then you can go to the other side. And add that dark color. So now you have a red tomato with one side that has a little bit more orange on one side and then a little bit more blue on the other. And that starts to give your painting a little bit more interest. Um, I like adding layers and layers. I think that makes the painting more interesting and more attuned to watercolors. I think we use watercolors to get those layers. If we weren't, we'd be using acrylics or maybe even pencil. So use watercolor to your advantage and just keep adding color. Okay, so now that we've mixed um, a foresty green, I'm going to show you how to mix a more um, yellow green. So this is that foresty color that we had. So now we're going to go back to our green to create a more um, yellow green. I'm going to take that same green color and this time I'm going to add like a lemony yellow. So some of these yellows you can see like one of them is really neon and this one's kind of in the middle, and then this guy goes more lemon yellow. I like to use the lemon yellow the best. Um, you can get really vibrant greens with this guy, but my taste, I tend to go this way, but plenty of people use all three. But just find what you like best. That's how you tend to develop, I guess, your style, is picking the different colors that you mix with. So I'm gonna take that yellow, mix it with my green. And because that yellow is really transparent, it's going to take a lot more yellow to transform this green. So I need more yellow. Okay. So now I have a bit more of that yellowy green. And then if we want to go um, past foresty green, the way to make a good brown that I've discovered is to mix green and red together and maybe a tiny touch of blue. So we've got some red kind of already in our palette over here, so what I'm going to do is add some green to that and I'll show you what I mean. So 
now it's starting to look like brown. So my palette actually comes with a decent amount of brown, so I tend to not mix brown as much. But this is a good way to get a cohesive color palette. I always encourage people, like, start with a small palette because then you learn what colors mix together. I think if you start with one of these, like, super massive big palettes, you tend to have colors that will clash because um, they don't mix as well. But if you start with a small palette, most of these are designed to mix together. So the smaller the palette, usually the more compatible all the colors are. So I had a lot of trouble when I first started because I had a big palette of colors. Um, and I'd try to mix them to get certain colors that I liked, and it just it never looked quite right. And I actually just went back to yellow, red, and blue and mixed everything, and it made such a difference. So if you want a little bit of a challenge or a discovery practice, I encourage you to start with kind of red, yellow, blue, and then you can kind of see how those colors work together. Okay, so I'll do a mini color wheel to wrap everything up so you can kind of test out these different mixing ideas. So all you have to do is create a triangle of color puddles, if you will, on your paper. So I'm going to grab the most primary red, blue, and yellow that I can get from my palette. So make them in a triangle. So I've, now I've got kind of this big puddle of red. Clean my brush. I'm going to grab this blue because it's not quite as dark. Like that. Now I'm going to grab my yellow, put that. Okay. So then all you can do is start to pull these two colors together. So now you get an orangey color. Then I'm going to pull this blue towards this yellow. And you'll get a green. I'm gonna clean my brush again. And pull the red towards the blue. And again, this blue's pretty strong, so a little goes a long way. And then you get a purple. So this is like the really rough version of a color wheel. And this will start to give you an idea of what colors you can achieve with your different um, reds and blues. And another thing to try is to pick out maybe your not quite so perfect reds, yellows, and blues. So for example, maybe I went with a more purpley red. So I could try the same thing. So this one's more purple. I'm going to go with kind of a, a cornflowery type blue. And then I'm going to go with that, um, maybe that super citrusy lime green or lime yellow. And then you can do the same thing. Start pulling the colors together and this will give you an idea for what different colors you can get. Whoops. I didn't clean my brush. Okay, so we've gone through tone, we've gone through color mixing, um, we've gone through layering of different colors. So all I can say is get started with your watercolors, grab some cheaper paper. I think you can get a pack of this for like $10 for 100 sheets if it's on sale. Um, and just start kind of mixing your colors and experimenting with adding different amounts of water to each color, um, mixing them together with different combinations, and then 
maybe start to play with layering them together so you can see how the different colors stack. And then once you understand how the colors stack, you're like, oh, I don't need to go put blue at the very end. I tend to start with the darker colors and then build up from there. But bottom line, there is no wrong way to watercolor. Um, there's just rules and then people breaking the rules. So just go have fun and let me guys know if you have any questions. Feel free to email me. Um, I'll have your emails and I can send out a recording of this video. I plan to do a few more of these just so we can get people getting started with watercolors. And then if you want the list of supplies, just go to my blog and then click on that supply list and it will give you links to everything that I've shown you in this video. Um, so thanks for following along and I'll keep chatting with you guys. So see y'all soon.